Good day and welcome to our Good Friday service here in the parks. I'm just going to begin my message with a thought. And the thought today is, Jesus says, who do you say I am? In Matthew's Gospel, in Matthew 16, verses 13 through to 15, we read, When Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? I think it's very strange, perhaps, for uh, those of us brought up in the West, particularly, uh, you know, who our view of history is very linear, um, to think why the uh, the audience you know those who are around Jesus at the time thought that he might be John the Baptist especially because you know their lives were at the same time perhaps he had only seemed to have died and that this was really John come again or Elijah you know this is the return of the prophet Elijah that he's he's come back he's returned or, or Jeremiah who had died and is now sort of come back again, maybe some form of reincarnation or something like that, or one of the other prophets who's now living again and having their time over, pointing people towards the God of Israel. They're trying to imagine who this man is. And the general idea seems to be that he's one of the prophets or a prophet, that this is who this person is. But then Jesus turns to those around him and he says, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And in Mark 15, verses 24 to 27, we read, And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes, and they cast lots to see what each of them would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And they crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. This is the, the scene that we've come today to remember, to look back on this moment in the life of Christ when he's hung upon the cross between two thieves. And if we have a video camera, say, and we were able to go back in time and just set up a video camera and record that day, that morning, what is it that we would see? What would we capture on our video camera? Just looking with the natural eyes of the video camera, what would we see? We would see perhaps three criminals stripped, whipped, publicly executed outside the walls of Jerusalem. That's what we would see. That's what we would see. We would see these three, three criminals hung upon crosses outside the, the walls of Jerusalem. We might see Roman imperial justice at its best, you know, conquering and oppressing those who would seek to rise up against imperial power. Uh, we might see a man choosing to forgive those who don't know what they're doing in his words, who then cries out with the voice of one of the Psalms as he's in agony. That's what we would see. We would see a man hung upon a cross, a man struggling to breathe, blood pouring down his face with a sign above his head saying, King of the Jews, or this man said, I'm the King of the Jews. We would see Roman power, a crucified criminal, a re insurrectionist who's now met what was coming to him. What do we not see on that Good Friday morning? We don't see sin literally being placed upon him do we? we don't kind of see that with our 
human eyes. We could take the crown of thorns as a symbol of sin, of this, you know, the symbol of thorns being the curse from Genesis. We might get that, but would we see sin being placed upon her? That isn't what we would see on camera, is it? It's not what we would pick up on our video camera. We wouldn't, on the video camera, see death being defeated by death, would we? We wouldn't see that occurring. We would see a man suffering and dying. Um, we wouldn't see God's victory over the powers and principalities. We wouldn't see him disarming the rulers in the unseen world. We, we wouldn't see that. What do we see? We see a man crucified. On a cross. That's what the video would show, a public execution of a condemned criminal. How does Peter speak of these events in Acts? Fresh in his mind, how does he speak of them? In Acts chapter 2 we see verses 22 to 23, Peter says this, Men of Israel, listen to these words, Jesus the Nazarene, a man clearly attested to you by God, with powerful deeds, wonders, miraculous signs that God performed among you through him, just as you yourselves know, this man who is handed over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you executed by nailing him to a cross at the hands of the Gentiles, by the hands of lawless men, um, those without Torah, the, the Gentiles. It's what Peter says, and Peter says, this is by a predetermined plan and the foreknowledge of God. You don't know that just on that Friday morning. Peter knows that in hindsight, looking back with the eyes of the resurrection, he knows, oh, it was in the, the purposes and the plan. But where was Peter on that morning? He had fled. He had fled. He had run away. He didn't want to be executed with Jesus. Peter calls him a man with God's approval, through whom God worked wondrous deeds, wonders and miraculous signs. A man executed by you at the hands of lawless men, men without Torah, men without the Gentiles. That's what, what you would see with the natural eyes, a man crucified upon a cross. Acts chapter 10, verses 36 to 39. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming good news of peace through Jesus Christ, for he's Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John had announced. With respect to Jesus from Nazareth, that God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, that he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. And we are witnesses of these things he did in Judah and Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him upon a tree. What's the impression you get from Peter? That God has anointed this Jesus of Nazareth from, from Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. That he did good, that he healed oppressed and he was killed by hanging upon a tree. Who do you say I am? That's Jesus' words. Who do you say I am? In Luke chapter 24, verses 19 to 21, we read, About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped, had hoped, that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. This is some of the disciples on the road to Emmaus and they meet with the risen Christ and he explains through the opening up of the scriptures who he is, who he was. But this is how they're perceiving things at this moment in time, just after the events. A prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people, who we had hoped was the one who is going to redeem Israel. Their hope, their messianic hope, was ended as their Messiah was crucified upon a cross. Just like so many other failed messiahs. 
when he died that was the end of his following yet that is not the end of the story this side of the resurrection before the resurrection you've got good friday and holy saturday what do you see what do you see you see a man anointed by god a prophet who worked miracles who was killed and publicly executed upon a tree that is what you see that's what you pick up on the video camera yet in the light of the resurrection from the dead we see who jesus really was the word of god through whom all things were made but we see it only in light of the end only in the light of the resurrection of the dead do we see who jesus really was not with the natural eyes you pick up with a video camera you know five foot tall you know jewish features it's not that it's who we see him as in light of the resurrection of the dead what about our own stories if people have video cameras and they look at our lives what do they see in our lives do they see illness grief suffering pain hardship they see difficulty they see our struggles with relationships with people around us the conflict and the violence of this world they see sickness suffering and death that's what you pick up on a video camera but only in the light of the resurrection do we see who we really are as well Matthew Wimbo, brown hair, brown eyes, born in Bristol, was chosen in Christ before the creation of the world to become like Christ. The end, chosen in Christ before the foundations of the world to become like Christ, makes sense of the present, the sufferings of this life. The future makes sense of the past. And so in the light of the resurrection, all the terrible things are transformed and given a different meaning, a different context. Only in the light of the full tapestry can we now see where every thread made sense, why dark threads are mixed with light threads. Only in light of the tapestry at the end do we know why each thread was needed in the way that it was. In light of the resurrection, we see the crucifixion not as defeat, but as a victory. This is the way by which God disarms the rulers and authorities in the unseen world. By trampling down death by death. Changing the use of death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through to 18 paul writes therefore we do not despair but even if our physical body is wearing away our inner person is being renewed day by day for our momentary light suffering is producing in us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison because we're not looking at what we can be seen but what cannot be seen for what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal so paul's got this dynamic for us he speaks of the sufferings of this present time as momentary light suffering this is a man who shipwrecked and everything else um abandoned by people um he says it's producing an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison and we should look at what cannot be seen rather than things that can be seen because those things are eternal rather than the temporary things of this world so this good friday let us acknowledge that our present struggles 
are real. And our ignorance of the future is real. We cannot see what God is doing, what God has done in Christ Jesus. Because our stories only make sense in light of the end. Only when the tapestry is finished do we see why every thread was needed. And yet acknowledging that our, our suffering is producing an eternal weight of glory, we can acknowledge that Sunday is coming. Good Friday only makes sense in light of the resurrection on Sunday morning. Only when Christ is risen from the dead do we know that death was trampled down by death. Otherwise, we're just looking at the video camera and we're seeing a failed Messiah crucified upon a cross. A man who had done some mighty works, who we hoped might have saved Israel, but couldn't. In light of the resurrection, we see that now everything has, has been turned upside down. Death has been conquered. The Messiah is being proclaimed throughout all of the nations of the world and all of the nations are being gathered into and under the authority of the God of Israel through his Messiah. Everything has changed. But only in light of the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Good Friday morning, help us to remember all that Christ has done for us and help us to do so with the eyes of faith knowing that the events of that good friday only make sense in light of the end and so likewise help us to look at our own lives and know that they too will only make sense in light of the end amen